Hi there, I'm Linda and this is Hutton's Valley Permaculture. As I build my small farm here, one of my primary aims is to meet my own needs. So to do that, I need to be planting plenty of food producing trees and shrubs. Today, I'm going to be planting some avocados, a fig tree, some artichokes and elderberries. Not only do I want to meet my own needs, but I'd love to be providing local food to my local community and help us all transition away from the global food system. Today, I'm going to be moving these couple of avocados that I've bought and I've got a fig tree here that a beautiful friend has grown from a cutting for me. So I'm gonna get that into the ground. I feel it's really important to be growing your own plants from seed or propagating from cuttings to create abundance. It gives you the opportunity to really grow your garden. Sharing your plants with others while they share with you not only can increase diversity, but can also reduce costs. It's sometimes as simple as digging up a plant such as this comfrey and breaking up the roots. Putting this into the ground will create a new plant come spring. You should be able to get a plant from that and if you break this up, there'll be a couple of plants out of that. That's one. We can break that in half and that's four plants there. You could even probably break them up into smaller pieces. Getting the tree in the ground is the easy part. The preparation is what takes all the time and effort. Here I've got some mushroom compost, some wood chips and the cardboard that I'll need to get the plant in the ground. I also need to get the area prepared. So I'm gonna head up there and get that done as well. At this time of year, it's early winter, it's still a good time to get plants into the ground in my area because it will give them plenty of time to get some roots into the ground before the, the drying effects of summer really hit and it'll help them get established really well. Now, just up here, I have previously planted avocados, but I'm a lot more prepared this time. My tree canopy in this area where I plan to plant these avocados has grown up a lot. I have had avocados here before and I protected them in these little structures, which was inadequate really for frost. I was thinking more about the wind at the time, I think, but now, We've got wind protection. This is the south down here. So there's pr plenty of protection from those southerly winds and easterly winds. And this tree here will protect from the westerly winds. Also, we've got this tree cover, which will help reduce any impact of frost. And I will be building a frost protection for these little trees when I put them in as well. So in this little spot here, I'm gonna put my first avocado because it has got lots of protection from these surrounding trees now. And I'm going to get my brush cutter, cut down all of this old grass, and I can use it to mulch around the area as well. I'll just unload all of this and grab my brush cutter. On my return trip to the swale, I'm just gonna grab my plants and take those up there as well. So I've got these two avocados. They're two different varieties. One's an A and one's a B, so that they fruit better. And I've got six elderberry plants at the moment. So I think I'll take three up and put them in that space where the avocados are growing. Hopefully that's everything we need. I've got some stakes I'm gonna put up around them and add this as frost protection. But first I'll get this brush cutter up there and we'll clear the area we need. With this all up here, the hardest part is actually done. Okay, so I've got the grasses cleared sufficiently. I can get my plants into the ground now. The second avocado tree, I'm just gonna nestle in this little spot here amongst these trees. I've got a couple of tagasasti, that's an acacia here, 
And this is a young acacia that's just growing. And I think there's another acacia hiding in over there as well, this one here. So I'm going to plant it smack bang in the middle here. There'll be plenty of protection from the, the wind and also from the frost, although I will put in some extra frost protection as well. We've had plenty of rain, so the ground is fairly soft. We've had nearly 200 mil this month, so that helps with getting trees into the ground as well. So I'll just fill that in a little bit more. Alrighty. I'll get that watered in and then I'll get the mushroom compost onto it. I am going to put down a layer of cardboard to help keep the weeds away from this little tree as it's starting to grow and get the wood chips on which helps to create the fungal soil that we're looking for. Now this one is a bacon variety avocado. Now I've got that in away from the trunk of the plant. I've just got to make sure that that trunk is still got plenty of room around it. To finish this little plant, we're just going to add in some extra frost protection. We do have these trees above, but having lost a few avocados already, I'm going to really nurture this little tree well and give it every possible chance to survive. It gets a bit expensive when you keep buying plants and then killing them. So I will put these stakes in. The mesh I have is just what I've been using on fruit trees and berries. So I'll just cut a section of this. Just using my stapler, I'm going to staple it into position and kind of just wrap it around. Our tree is snug as a bug in its little frost protection. It's a bit hard to see it in there, but there is still plenty of light that's getting into this tree. All I'm going to do now is just pile up all the cut grass sort of around the edge to mulch that well. Now we've just got to repeat for tree number two. It's always worth putting in effort to get your trees in really well. I thought I had the first time, but I've learned a lot since then. So you can only do as well as what you have learned. So put in the time, get these trees established because hopefully they'll be feeding both myself and the community for years down the track. I think I'll put two of these elderberries here. It's quite an open space in this section here. It'll be a little bit of time before this one kicks in, which will probably be spring. But I think an elderberry here and maybe just over here will give a bit of added protection to our uh, avocado tree as it grows. Nice little root system on there. Quite a few worms in this soil. Just one more.
that just leaves the comfrey to get in. Now this one here, it's got quite a bit of root on it. So I think I might just, well, divide the plant and get a few more. I'm just gonna get my spade and split it. And you could sort of, well that bit's come off, so that's a plant. And I'm just gonna take that bit off and that's a plant and that makes that easier to plant. And I'll whack that in the ground like that. Now I'm not gonna to be too careful with these plants. If the root's in the ground, it should start to take off. So I'll just bury that in. It'll be raining soon, so that's all I'm gonna do. The roots are not gonna dry out there, so they'll be just fine. A lot of these pieces of root, you can just kind of dig a hole and jam them in. So that's got a growing point. I'll just leave that kind of at the top. But I'll just pop that in there and press that hole closed again. And I'll just keep doing that with the, the rest of these roots that I've got. Just kind of, yep, that's got a growing point. Jam it in there and enclose the roots and just keep going until I've got them all in the ground. Comfrey in the ground, let's get onto the fig. I've decided the perfect spot for my fig tree is going to be right here. It's got lots of sun that comes from the east Right from the north, there's not too much shade at this point. And down the track, we should be able to trim that tree just to make sure that it gets adequate light. There is a little olive tree just here. So that shouldn't be too close. And the other productive tree in this area is a nectarine. There should be adequate space between all of those trees. So once again, I'm just gonna clear the area where I'm gonna plant this fig tree, but instead of my brush cutter, I think I can get away with my sickle. There's just a bit of clover and this horrible creeping buttercup. There is a little bit of some woolly vetch that was my original cover crop, and it's slowly multiplying and making its presence felt, but not enough to have done the job to start with. So I'm just going to, clear a spot so I'm not going to do much more than just that just so I can expose the soil a bit perfect time of year to be planting trees when you can just dig into your soil as easy as that all right let's test out our pot okay I might just bring that up a little bit Wow, heap of worms in there. In you go, guys. Okay, I'll just, I don't like to pack it down too much, but I don't mind a little bit of a firming. Just ensure the base of the tree isn't buried. Just make sure that that's not too close in there. I'll be checking on that over time. The fig here should be pretty bright. I don't, I'm not going to put a frost protection uh, on it because it should be able to tolerate the weather here, which doesn't get too cold. And it's not like the avocado where it's um, got leaf during winter. So I'm just going to mark it with a stake so that when spring comes, we don't lose this little plant to the grasses. Rightio, there we go. Again, I've got three elderberries to get in the ground and I've got three artichokes. So the artichokes, I think I might just put kind of along the front here and the elderberries, I reckon one in amongst that 
and a couple just over here. So between the olive tree and the fig tree, if we have a couple of elderberries, I think that will fill that space in nicely. That just leaves the comfrey to get in the ground. I'm going to do just like I did before. Just make a little slit in the ground, pop the root in, job done. Just need to mulch my small plants now. I'm gonna just harvest a bit of grass and use that. All right, that pile of grass should be enough to, to mulch these plants. People often ask me why I'm planting so many food producing plants on this property and feel concerned that it will be too much work as years go by. I look at the future abundance in a different way. I look at it as an opportunity to invite others in to help with harvests and share the produce and hopefully open people's eyes to the possibility that the natural world can easily feed us all. We need to create an abundance mindset and get away from the scarcity way of thinking. Not all of the food will be harvested, but it can drop to the ground to enrich the soil or feed our beautiful wildlife.